Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Midnight Snacks, the only hey. podcast on YouTube with Mandoreen and my guy here. Bucky Mark, how's it going? Yeah, that's right. And tonight again, for the second week in a row, or the second episode in a row, we uh, tried to get Leon to come back, but uh, apparently it takes him an hour or 20 minutes to turn on his laptop, and uh, you know what? The baby's not going to cook itself, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But uh, that, there's no meaning to that. Don't look deeply into that. It's just random. But real quick, before we get into this show where we talk about PewDiePie, H3H3, Casey Neistat, Nintendo Switch, I want to give a big shout out once again to 7RC3 Productions for doing the artwork that you're seeing on yeah. the screen. He drew those avatars out of the kindness of his heart without anything in return, except for uh, I mentioned I'd give him a shout out on the show. So if you like the art, go check him out on Twitter at 7RC3 Productions. He's also a big fan of H3H3 Productions. Might be where he got the name. He's also on Tumblr and all over the place. So check the links in the bio. One more thing before we get into the uh, stories today. We also have an Amazon link in the bio, which I mentioned last week. If you go click on that, buy something from Amazon, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but we get a small, small percentage of that purchase. And that'll go towards supporting our website recording software, Zencaster, which does charge as well as uh, getting our show on iTunes. So the plan is if we can get some sort of uh, funds to offset the expenses, I'll be able to pay for SoundCloud hosting and then bring this podcast onto iTunes. And so you can listen to it on um, Android or iOS devices and uh, not have to come to YouTube. So that's out there, but no worries if not. We uh, we just wanted to have a little chit-chat tonight. Um, any idea where you wanted to start, Mark? Um, I don't know. What we could were probably, you talking uh, about? Uh, what we were just talking about? The, um... you, know, you know what? Let's talk about the H3H3 thing real quick. Yeah, I want to put that, put that up first. Um, I actually, just so for anyone who doesn't know, probably about a year ago now, H3H3 Productions, who's a commentary sort of reaction, more of a reaction channel, comedy YouTuber, made a video where he announced that he was being sued for one of his reaction videos where he made fun of this guy whose channel's name is Bold Guy. So here, to make it clearly, there's this guy who does parkour videos where he chases these girls around and kind of makes himself like look like a hero of sorts and like makes these girls like him. And the videos are just creepy and not funny and just so out of touch. This guy's probably like <laughs> in his 40s and he thinks he's like a real badass. So H3H3 just made this reaction video. It was nothing special really. It was not even one of their best videos. Oh shit, there's Leon. But uh, oh, basically... Hey. Oh, there's Leon. <laughs> that answers that question. <laughs> don't, don't, cut <laughs> don't cut off the story. You're going to throw the whole flow off. Just wait a minute. You can hop in. Um, so basically H3H3 All right. made this uh, video calling him out for making these sexual parkour videos and calling it, you know, pornographic in nature, even though there was nothing nude, but it was just kind of creepy, you know? So this guy, bold guy, got butt hurt about the video and decided to, to take H3H3 to court and sue him. And uh, that's what's been going on for like the past year or a year oh, and a half now. Uh, H3 made a video this week showing that the, the bill for their first month alone with their original lawyer the first month of the legal cost was $54,000 for one single month, uh, which is pretty, pretty incredible, uh, pretty large amounts. Apparently, they had to drop that lawyer and go with a new one because they weren't happy with how the, the case or whatever was going with the original lawyer. But um, so anyways, now they're about to end this case. Back when they originally made that video announcing they were getting sued, Philip DeFranco, who is a news channel on YouTube, made a GoFundMe in their behalf and raised over $150,000 in support for this case, which then spawned the FUPA, which is a fair use protection account that helps smaller, medium, large, whatever. It just helps YouTubers fight to protect fair use in their videos and on the platform in general, which is... It's, I must add that it's very admirable that Ethan and Ela are just the kind of people of the, that high caliber and humility 
that they wouldn't ask their fans for money. Instead, someone else <laughs> asked for that money on their behalf. And uh, so the first month alone was $54,000. Who knows how much the rest of the, it has costed, but I know it's taken a big uh, emotional toll on Ethan and Ela. Ela was actually crying in their recent video briefly, and it was a lot of people were just broken by Ela crying. But uh, I don't know what oh, your guys' dude. thoughts are on this. But uh, <laughs> bold guy's kind of a kind of a washed up dick, and I don't think this would have been as big of a story <laughs> if uh, if he didn't do the lawsuit. He wouldn't have got any uh, anywhere near as much hate. He probably would have been able to continue his YouTube channel. And the way it looks from the uh, from the lawyer I saw talking about it here on YouTube, I watched several hours going through the papers, the court papers. It really looks like it's an H3, H3's favor and that they'll likely recoup the costs. Can't say for 100% yet, but yeah. um, I don't know what you guys think about the whole situation. Oh, I know man. I kind of spit a lot out there. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot to go through. Um, man, fuck that guy, man. Uh, it, it's, just, it's just such a fucked up situation to be in. I, I like really can't imagine going through that just getting sued i had something to say but i like completely fucking forgot well well here's the what they're fighting in the like, court uh what bold guy is saying is that uh what ethan was doing was simply stealing his content and re-uploading it not changing the jokes at all yeah. and trying to extrapolate the humor but what ethan is arguing is that this was a commentary slash criticism that uh, they were saying his video was was sexual in nature, and it was just a criticism. Right. And what's going on is the court, you know, the court says, well, you know, he couldn't have asked for permission to use this because no one would give permission to somebody else to criticize their work. So in that way, it's fair. But what what um, Matt Haas is arguing is that all the points they made were the same point over and over again, and that H three H three used more of the video than that's was bullshit. Needed. When uh, it was the, eleven, it was eleven minutes of video with like yeah. three minutes of his. Uh, Do you have the video still there? Video. Their video is not there, but someone re-uploaded okay. the um, the video. <clears throat> because I remember I watched it the first time, and I just wouldn't have expected um, that mm. kind of like consequence from that, uh, like because it mm. was on his fucking. Um, oh, it was it was on their second Gary channel, mm -hmm. uh, Ethan and Ela. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're just gonna go. I'm agreeing with you, man. Come on, I'm the support here. Okay. Out of all. Anyway. Um, out of all the channels. Uh, so. Hold, hold ah! on a second. I, you can't just come on here and be like an hour late and just be eating. Like it's not cool. Like nobody wants to hear that. Honestly. I'm not eating. But um. No, he's just mm, like being really interruptive. Yeah. But here's the thing, out of all the reaction mm. channels on YouTube that uh, could have been sued, H3H3 H3 is the last one I would expect because he actually makes transformative work. He's actually very careful about the people he talks about. So it's just, it's crazy that you see all these stupid fucking couples channels that just sit down, <laughs> put a dumb, try not to laugh compilation on in the corner of the screen, and they just sit there and they just dab, dab. It's like, shut the fuck up. How, how is H3 getting sued and all these other people that are just ripping people's videos blatantly, not getting any... Well, it's attack. because it was like a personal tag and the guy felt like... Um... You know, he was like, oh, fuck this guy, gooped on me. Gonna go sue him now, I guess, because get a lot of money out of it. Although now I'm hearing, um, I, don't, I don't know, like, what his financial situation and his angle is. I heard he's like a fucking pizza delivery guy. Um, uh, I don't know if that so I don't know where he's getting the money to, like, sue him. Like, I guess the, the prosecuting lawyer is probably just, like, on a pay after win case but like if he doesn't win he's probably like indebted for the rest of his life or some bullshit um, yeah because he'll have to pay their legal fees and his legal fees i'm not sure how that works right is that, is that correct or not i i don't think he has to pay their legal fees or what i think the case is just like um because i remember when they like made the video talking about it he pretty much was just suing them for like they had like a whole estimate of like the money he made off the video and he'll like continue to make from like 
actual like future success like he was really he was actually kind of smart about like the money he was getting because he like just kind of like really just went into any sort of plausible financial gain and try to like get from him but like i think in terms of like civil suits go um they're really just a bullying fucking tactic and then just like a money grabbing scheme um yeah i know one of the things really don't get get um, you, but yeah, you don't really get reimbursed for that if you're found out yeah. guilty. You're just like, oh, have fun. Yeah, I guess you could counter sue, but like, I, there's no way he's gonna go. Like, they're gonna go through go with that after like all the stress of like the first lawsuit. That would just Here, be insane. Here's another important piece of data from the from the court papers that are posted. Um, they were trying to look at. You know, Matt was arguing that this. Uh, their H3, H3 video replaced and stole the market for his original video, but they looked back at the statistics and they clearly saw that Matt Haas's video, it was old, it was an older video and it had, its views had peaked and dropped. And then H3, H3 made their video and after that his views blew up, probably as well as his dislikes, and that uh, <laughs> Matt Haas was arguing that it stole his potential market and all this, but it's like, I would never have watched a Matt Haas video unless H3 no. actually talked about it. I'd never even heard of the guy. <laughs> I wouldn't have any interest in watching parkour, like, cringy skits, even if uh, I knew about it. <laughs> yeah. That was, I, I, do you know how his channel's doing now, like, after the fact? Like, did he uh, lose subscribers, or did I he, know, like, gain any? pure hatred, and, like, he did, a, like, the last video I saw from him was, like, reading hate comments and, like, being all snarky about it. Like, look at this. Oh, he just did a video right now. I'm looking. 57 seconds long. Matt Haas zone. It says Matt Haas versus H3H3 lawsuit trial date with in parentheses Ethan and Ela Klein. And I think before that, it was four months ago, he did another video about it. But I don't want to even click on it because he has, oh, yeah. he has such a punchable face. Like <laughs> He's so probably going to say something really hurtful or something. I, I, like, I really doubt that kind of person is capable of like empathy or whatever. He um, disabled the, uh, the ratings on this new video. It's got 10,000 views. Um, oh you don't God. need to see the comments. Oh, the, the comments are still enabled. The top comment says, I hope you lose with 1,500 uh, 1, likes. Uh, yeah. Another one says from Xavier Esquiros Martinez, greetings from Spain. We hate you there too. Uh, next one says your channel is dying. Stop, please. Uh, here's the truth. You're a fucking bitch. <laughs> this guy sucks. Parkour <laughs> off a building, please. So he kind of he, he reminds me of um, that other Ethan Nila goof, like that other meme what was it like uh, Jimmy the Jersey Outlaw. Do you remember that guy? Oh, uh, is that the dentist Jimmy Wiener? Guy? Yeah, he's the uh, uh, fuck. What's What's the thing? The dentist guy. One fucked up dentist. One bro. fucked up dentist. Uh, one fucked up, <laughs> one fucked up dentist. Yeah, because he, he does all these videos of like these really young women. I like, yeah. He's like the same kind of washed up kind of dude. Um, only it, it's just so weird. I'm trying to imagine like how you go to dinner. Like they actually like fucking went out to lunch with him, and then another guy they goofed on. He they got sued by him. So like, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, I guess the like the dentist guy didn't need the money. He's already making a lot of money because he's a fucking dentist. So you, you, you broke, know who knows. You broke for, like the last ten seconds. You just broke up there. Oh, um, I did. But yeah, that that dinner that Ethan went to with the dentist was pretty embarrassing. Leon, did you hear about the <laughs> lawsuit with H three? Are are you out of the loop or? Oh, what's going on? Um, I knew that. The guy was only butthurt about criticism. That was the only way he did it and took it that far, which was a waste of time. Was he coming through to you? It was yeah, I, I got him. I got him. I think my connection might be a little weak here. Yeah. No, it's fine. So, um, just in case, yeah, I think he wasted his time just because he was hurt because of a. Uh, video that criticized him i know a lot of people that would take it to that degree until you know something happens to the person who got criticized like you know yeah i mean people go to a certain distance and lengths to uh get what they want and i think this really has big ramifications for the whole community and for fair use in general on youtube 
I mean, this is for fair yeah. use because fair use is such a gray law that nobody really knows. There's no like really definable. There's there's of course there's some guidelines, but it, it's it's like. A lot of times it comes down to like, oh, do you have enough money to fight this in, in court? Right. Well, if you don't, you're fucked, and you're not gonna yep. you're not gonna come out of this with anything in your pocket. Uh, but I think if they win this, it'll set a precedent for other court cases with YouTubers, which I would think um, there's been other YouTubers who have been sued, but I don't think there's been a case that was given this much notoriety. Um, but it's it'd be really cool if they actually got to recover those costs that they spent fighting this. Because if they win, they get all the, the the legal fees back. They don't get any of their emotional um, recovery. Because I know it's been a situation right. for them to go to New York and go to court when they're living in L.A. But um, they get their money back, and if they get that back, I guarantee that they're probably going to put it in the FUPA account. And help people like when they help this guy called Channel Chriswell, who does like movie commentary kind of stuff. Um, he was one of the first people that the FUPA account actually successfully protected uh, for fair oh, use. And that didn't get too much coverage. It did make some news, but I didn't know uh, that. they actually have helped out several others. And I often see Ethan on Twitter. People are always tweeting at Ethan because he's almost become an, I wouldn't say an expert, but he kind of knows a little bit more than the average, I'd say. So people have been tweeting Ethan, and he's been pretty proactive about helping other people who are, who are facing these kind of um, situations. But uh, I don't know. The next thing, I, I, any other thoughts on the H3 thing? Um, the PewDiePie? No, not really. I thought I had, I had some questions. But no, I pretty much said everything I wanted to, so... Okay, so the next yeah. thing I want to talk about is old news. This is a dead meme. Everybody, their uncle, their <laughs> monkey, their brother, their sister, and their dog has talked about PewDiePie versus the Wall Street Journal now. <laughs> wanted to talk about this last week, but I had a little reluctance from one of my hosts who rem remained nameless. But uh, I want to talk about it anyways because there's been a few new developments on the story. And I think uh, with the PewDiePie versus Wall Street Journal, there's, there's a wide angle you could take about this because... Let me make a long story really short in case you've been living under a YouTube rock and don't know about the story. The biggest YouTuber on this website is known as PewDiePie. He's got nearly 54 million subscribers. He made videos about jokes involving Hitler and a video about the website Fiverr intended to show how absurd it can be that people on this website will do anything for five or more dollars. So we have these two guys in the middle of the jungle, simply known as the Fiverr guys, hold up a sign that says death to all Jews and saying, subscribe to Keemstar. So the Wall Street <laughs> Journal got a couple of reporters together to comb through PewDiePie's videos and essentially made what's being deemed a hit piece, alleging that PewDiePie is a racist, anti-Semitic, and completely taking his video parts out of context. So of course we all know the internet blew up with outrage. J.K. Rowling, even the creator of Harry Potter, made multiple tweets basically calling PewDiePie a racist after she read the Wall Street Journal article and later yeah. defending those tweets after uh, backlash. So everyone and their uncles made videos about this, including Grade A Under A, who made a late video regurgitating everything I just said and everything that's been said about this and calling out Ben Fritz, the, the, uh, the now-deemed hashtag hippo Fritz, um, tweets against Jews because for people who don't know, Ben Fritz is one of the, um, the reporters at the Wall Street Journal who helped and contributed heavily to this hit piece on PewDiePie. And people went scouring through his Twitter and found out he made racist tweets saying he went to someone's Hanukkah party. He, w he wasn't aware that Jews were so adept at frying. So this guy, who's a South Park fan and et cetera, had made black jokes and Mexican jokes on Twitter. <laughs> called out PewDiePie for his jokes about Jewish people, so people have called Ben Fritz a hypocrite. That's pretty um, funny. And, and so Grade A talked about all these points, and people were saying, hey, Grade A under A, you can't be the one calling out the Wall Street Journal when you were embroiled with this Leafy and uh, Keemstar drama that was like the hottest news of 2016, because uh, not defending Keemstar's character here, um, I know a lot of people don't like Keemstar. I personally understand that, but I enjoy his content. But yeah, at the end of the day, Grade A Andre did take a lot of things that Keemstar said out of context 
and basically made a hit piece against him. So this mm. shows that it's not only the mainstream media that people need to be wary of. I know there's a hype train like the mainstream media isn't popular and don't trust the mainstream media. But, I mean, that's true. But really, it's like, don't trust anybody. You need to investigate into things. You need to, you need to take multiple angles, take multiple sources. Yeah. And this sort, of, this sort of brings up the idea of bias in news. I heard earlier on the new baited podcast today with Keemstar, Andy Milanakis, and Anything for Views, Keemstar was saying he actually prefers bias because it shows, it's, it, he says it's more trustworthy when someone's clear with their bias and it's more entertaining uh, rather than someone like Philip DeFranco who gives like <laughs> kind of like says both sides of the story and then goes with a, what Keemstar called a popular opinion. Now, I can see both perspectives. On one hand, I like someone with a clear, you know, bias that's laid out. But on the other hand, uh, I like, you know, I like Keemstar because he's entertaining and I don't always agree with him. But yeah. I like Philip DeFranco because he gives multiple angles and lets me kind of choose what I want to think about it, even if I don't agree with him. You know, I I, I feel like Keem, it's <laughs> he's pretty funny. Um, talking about bias, he, I, I'm going to just go, go up and straight, he's a straight up bias. Like, I, I think he just doesn't like Billy D because that's his main competition. Um, which is true, like, every time I see him. If I actually... I don't give a fuck about scarce, but I, I've seen him like all the time. Okay, well, I, I've only seen one beta cop podcast. He was talking about how he, how much he hated Philly D for no conceivable reason other than I can think to myself, "Oh, that's his main competition. He's actually entertaining, and he touches on a lot of drama. Um, like he is more to worry about Philly D than he has, does scarce um, in terms of like entertainment value and drama." I'm just personally, I really don't care about this shit. I, I know you didn't want to name names earlier, but it's just hard for me to take the drama seriously. <laughs> Hashtag I stand with PewDiePie. Um, there's so much more important shit going on in the world. Um, I would argue this is important though, because fake news is more prevalent today, or at least more obvious yeah. than any other time in history, and people for are more. profiting off of it. Well, so, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I guess not many people will, like knew about PewDiePie outside of YouTube. Like, if you don't watch YouTube, you won't know who PewDiePie is. Um, and that's the fact. And I think, like, people going into it, um, like, the Wall Street Journal, a typically, like, conservative leading newspaper whose main subscriber base is probably, like, I don't know, baby boomer era people, you know, they, they just won't understand it. They'll just look at the article and be like, oh, cool, click on that. Fucking degenerate YouTubers or, you know, like... I, yeah, I don't. I think they really thought thought through the repercussions for that. Um, it seems to me I could be wrong, but it seemed to me like they had a reputation before this for being a more trustworthy news site. Well, yeah, they are pretty trustworthy. If you look, I don't know, like at actual issues, they pretty much report on it pretty well. I think in terms of like cultural things, they kind of got it wrong. Um, I don't. I don't know what the the original report was that they like the Disney cut a deal with PewDiePie or like that came no, after they, they made did uh, it come after I think Disney dropped him I'm not sure on the order of events so don't take this, okay. with, take this with a grain of salt but I think Disney dropped him and then the Wall Street Journal did uh, an article like PewDiePie or Disney cut ties with PewDiePie and they used that as like a, a chance to kind of attack him yeah uh, uh, no, no, the Wall Street Journal came first. That's what happened. Wall Street Journal right. was saying he was anti-Semitic. And because of that, Disney dropped him. And then they did another article about that, I think. And as a result of that, YouTube dropped him. And even PewDiePie himself said, it's not really Disney that's to blame because this is under Maker Studios. Maker Studios doesn't necessarily have to make the same kind of content as Pixar or these family movies because Disney has many right. companies. They own ESPN, ABC News. They own Touchstone Pictures, like Miramax, I think. They have, they made Pulp Fiction. They made a lot of... So, Maker Studios, who knows what the guidelines are there. But basically, PewDiePie even said that kind of the Wall Street Journal uh, forced YouTube's hand in this because even if you don't like PewDiePie or don't watch his content, he's kind of the face of YouTube. Right. Um, 54, <laughs> 53 million subscribers is... Um, that's a pretty big deal. 
Yeah, I don't see like that's crazy to me. I um I don't, shit, I I just don't know like where to go government here. I, like to me it's just kind of hard like, you know, cuz it's just like it, it, it people not many people know and it, because of that people will get the wrong impression when you start making jokes like that. Uh, otherwise like I don't know you look at other shows like South Park or Always Sunny, no one bats an eye, right? Um, yeah. you know, always sunny. There's an episode where they all just like, you know, two of the characters are in blackface <laughs> and no yeah. one gave a fuck. Cause like, and it's crazy. There... I know the episodes and it's crazy that no one yeah. at our age, maybe it was a couple of years <laughs> back now, but it was, it was like a couple, it was in the, it was a lethal weapon. It's like at least two of the lethal, a lethal weapon episodes. Yeah, that was a good one. And one of them was more recent. Um, cause like D did blackface in that one. Uh, but no one gave a fuck. I remember they were like on Conan, Orion, like his show. And he like pointed that out. He's just like, I swear you guys, you guys are the only people who can like put on a show like that and get away with it. <laughs> like no one, that's an eye. And it's like fucking hilarious to me. Um, yeah. Those guys started with nothing, too. Like, they just right. they shot these, like, uh, pilot episodes, and they didn't even know if the show was going to make it. Eventually, right. they made a deal with Danny DeVito with the network so they could keep another season going. And with <laughs> that kind of, like, Danny DeVito, like, saved that show. But it's amazing, the stuff. Like, they do a lot of political satire. And right. it's usually hilarious. Like, I think it's just their well, characters are so inept. They're so ridiculous. Anybody that right. knows the show knows that, like, yeah, this would be a really dumb thing to do. So uh, yeah, it's like really depraved. Like that's the whole premise of the show is that they're really depraved, narcissistic assholes, and like you know, like all the humor is super dark and depraved, and really just unconscious. Like you know, the the, the whole joke is that they're on they're not self aware at all when when they do those kind of things, like wear blackface and like I like make these whole, like really cringy arguments about like for it and shit. Um, uh, like that's fucking hilarious. But with like someone like PewDiePie, like he's an internet sensation, and the internet is right. such a—it's just like the world. The world is divided and it's polarized ideologically. So it's amazing yeah. to me that the reaction of PewDiePie's fans and the internet in general, even people that aren't his fans, quote unquote, have been so supportive and able to see, hey, this is just a joke, and it's raised the the, the conversation about context matters. Right. Um, which which I tend to agree with. I think context does matter, and I don't think these things were said hatefully. But yeah. for someone with such a large subscriber base, I know there's probably tons of people that subscribe that don't even watch. I mean, millions of people. Right. But Honestly, I don't know why he just doesn't sue them. Because he could sue them. Like, he, he definitely has a case for, like, a, who knows? Know, defamation or libel. Um and they'll cost him millions, people are saying, with between Disney and Scare PewDiePie, YouTube, right. Red, Google Preferred. He did he did lose a lot of money and from that, video, so he actually does have a case for like, you know, what? And his new video that he was uploading, he had to change the thumbnail because he uploaded a video that had like a pixelated like cleavage that was like a video game character. Right. And before he even published the video, it got uh, demonetized as not, uh, not advertiser friendly, which... Usually the video won't get demonetized until after it's published. So this could be like a kind of a blowback as, you know, maybe he's kind of under a, a bigger microscope from YouTube now, kind of trying to like monitor his every move while yeah. he continues to try to do content like he always does. But it seems like there has been, been some, some fallout from this. Like um, even KSI, who is another big YouTuber, this could be completely unrelated, by the way, but... I kind of feel like it's really related because right after this whole thing, KSI, who's Comedy Shorts Gamer's brother, he's one of the biggest, like, he's like a FIFA YouTuber, video game YouTuber, comedy kind of thing. He deleted like 2 billion views of videos from his channel saying he wants to change his content right after this whole thing with PewDiePie. And nobody else I've heard. Who, KSI? Yeah, KSI. I haven't heard. No, he's garbage. Anyway. Yeah, but it's interesting that he deleted two billion views of videos with this. He's with a different. Um, he's with Style Hall. That's his his network. But mm. it it seems a little bit coincidental that oh, you know, at, right after this thing, another big YouTuber is like, yeah, I'm going to delete two billion v views from my channel because I'm not happy with my old content. Like, it's it seems huh. like it could be related. Maybe not. 
I could be. I, I don't know. Added. Just things, things but, just happen a lot at the same time. Like I don't know when drama happens. Oh, I, I, I think it's just like consistent. Something will happen because people who run the online communities aren't fucking perfect, and YouTube's not really like a set corporation when it comes to the artists who give them money. So like, you know, these people with like really complicated lives and anything can happen. And you know, when you have like, I don't know how many people are on YouTube now, like a whole bunch, it's a pretty decent probability. You don't really see any kind of coincidence from that. Yeah. And they got YouTube TV starting now. Bring all the TV networks over. You got any thoughts about the PewDiePie thing, uh, Leon? No, I just thought it was pretty fucked up how they did him dirty, but he has enough um, fans to actually still make a living. Yeah. So I think he'll be okay from there. He doesn't seem... He'll be fine. It's just how the... uh, It just made a prime example of how the uh mainstream media can really be sometimes and how left-wing they are or hypocritical wall street journal is like conservative uh, leaning they're not even left well what's it called um oh they made a story about him to uh just being nice you know when he first started uh hitting the mainstream and they started writing articles all youtubers are the new celebrities and then out of nowhere, I don't know what gave him this idea to target PewDiePie. That's what well, I'm interested in. What I wanted to. All these stats showing like their declining revenues over the past decade, and only a very small increase in digital sales, like ad revenue, mm-hmm. or whatever. So, you know, it seems to me like people that work at Wall Street Journal are probably smart people. I don't think they have a bunch of idiots working over there. At least as far as academic intelligence right. I can't believe that they would expect this to be like receive anything but negative backlash so it seems very strange to me that they would even do an article Probably their like subscriber this. base that they like risk did you uh guys hear that i don't know if you said this earlier um but they sent him mail and stuff <laughs> Asking him house. if they, he wanted to be on a newspaper to defend himself. They wanted to give him a platform to defend himself. Yeah, they went to his actual house and slid papers under his doorway, like at his. They went to his house, not even just Did sending mail. Yeah, the Wall Street Journal reporters went to his house, slid some messages under his door. Doesn't he live in Switzerland? Sweden, Sweden? I believe. But I yeah, think Sweden. But I think also, yeah, they went to his house. I think he's in. Uh, He's from Gothenburg, Sweden, but I'm not sure. Oh, I thought he recorded from Sweden. But I, I know he does fly he out to New York occasionally. Office. He actually bought the club. <laughs> the club penguin. That's so fucking funny. Oh my it, god. It's a meme, but it's real. Because the club <laughs> shut down, and he bought their their offices to record his show, so he didn't have to fly to LA all the time. I know he'll feel um, the might of the band hammer. <laughs> the story is beyond dead now. Nobody probably cares, and if we didn't lose at least half of our listeners, I'd be surprised. So I want to move on. <laughs> yeah. To um, I think I want to do a real short thing here about the Nintendo Switch. What are you guys? What are you guys hearing about the Switch? It comes out tonight. Probably be out by the time oh, really? we're getting this. March third, two thousand seventeen, uh, is the launch date for the uh, Nintendo Switch in North America. Not sure about the other regions, but it's Nintendo's new. Home console hybrid handheld. In my opinion, it seems like more of a handheld. But um, the, the Legend yeah, of Zelda you. Breath of the Wild is the, the big title. It looks amazing. All these websites are giving it a 10 out of 10. Don't know if you guys have any thoughts about the Switch. Oh, dude, it's it's nothing compared to the Wii U. The Wii U was probably... It, w- it wasn't that bad, but they could have done better. And they, If they came out with the Switch, I would have stayed with the Switch, definitely. I really don't have any opinions on Nintendo. I've really been keeping up with Nintendo since, like, the Wii. And I think I stopped, like, buying Nintendo consoles. Like, I switched over to Xbox, like, the Xbox 360. Um, Probably was in middle school. Like, Halo 3 had just came out. Um, All my friends are playing that. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to got to switch over now. Um, No pun intended. you got to switch over. (laughs) 
God damn it. <laughs> and I feel like in the next couple of uh, weeks, I might decide to uh, get the Switch because I am a big fan of Super Mario and Zelda. And when you want to play the latest games of those, you always got to buy a Nintendo you, system yeah. for it. PlayStation and Xbox really don't carry all those well, games. Well, I used to be a huge Nintendo fan, but or uh, Mario fan. Sorry, Mario fan. I was a huge Mario fan. Um, I remember getting all the, like, the fucking merch as a kid and shit. And I don't know what happened to that. Like, after when I switched over, I just got the fucking Halo, man. Just playing Infection all the time and shit. Just kind of forgot it. You can actually play the new Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on the uh, Nintendo Wii U. That's the console it was originally announced for, but the Wii U flopped so hard. I had one that I sold it about a year and a half ago and bought an Xbox One. And I recently yeah. sold the Xbox One. I just don't have time to play it anymore. But, I, I don't know why they have like a really gimmicky approach to their consoles. Like, I don't know, like the Wii U. The yeah, Wii U they, I know product. they try to differentiate themselves with like a big handheld thing. And like, I don't know. It, did you, you said it was, it was failing, right? Or it at least didn't. it was kind of a flop. The Wii U was a commercial flop. Yeah, the Wii U kind of sucked. It was that? underpowered, and the gamepad was poorly designed, and it didn't get support from third party. And eventually see, that's such a huge gimmick to me. I don't know why they do that. Like, you know, designing something like that, just make a regular fucking console. <laughs> like, you know, don't, you know, get us back in controller and shit. You know, go, well, go back to the GameCube. Like, Nintendo always does what they want yeah. to do, and that's kind right. of the reason I love them. I think a lot of people like them because PS4 and Xbox One. PC, they kind of all have the same games. It's all about the exclusives, and Nintendo has their franchises. See, I play all video game systems. I play Steam, I play Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, but Nintendo's always been like my heart because their games are usually more lighthearted, more colorful. They have the franchises like Mario, Mario Kart, right, Zelda, Zelda, Smash Brothers, all these games that I love. So I always stand by Nintendo, and I've, I've, I've been a <laughs> fan um, even through all the crap they've done, you know, the Wii U did have good games, but it was a bad, a bad system from a hardware perspective. Um, I think the Switch is going to be what they should have done with the Wii U originally. Like, it looks pretty cool to be able to, you know, carry these games on the go with you anywhere. Yeah, and it's pretty versatile. That's pretty fucking cool. One thing here that was interesting that I wanted to talk about is. The Nintendo Switch cartridges are like these little SD card sizes. And apparently what Nintendo's done is actually made them taste bitter. Uh, a Nintendo spokesperson told uh, Kotaku, to avoid the possibility of accidental ingestion, keep the game card away from young children. A oh my agent, god. A bittering agent, denotium benzoate, has been applied to the game card. This bittering agent is non-toxic, and apparently this is the most, like, bitter-tasting substance that was accidentally discovered in some scientific experiments, like, decades ago. But they put really? this thing on here. It's, it's the same substance they use for anti-nail-biting treatments, but they coat the cartridges, with, huh. cartridges with it. And all these people on YouTube have been, like, licking their... or putting the Switch cartridges in their mouth and being like, is it really true? Is it really bitter? All of them are like, it tastes like electrocute, or it tastes like a 9-volt battery, or, like... Like, it tastes really bad, but it's just kind of a funny tidbit that, um... Huh. Is it... I'm assuming it's really basic, then? Whatever that chemical is? I'm not really sure basic about the, the, the chemical makeup. I just thought it was funny that they put this, yeah. this stuff on there to make it... So people didn't put it in their mouth, and of course, on YouTube, everybody <laughs> starts licking it and putting it in their mouth. Right. That's pretty That's fucking funny. <laughs> Nice, but uh, not too much more about the Switch. But I'm, I'm actually, I'm really excited for it. But I'm gonna hold off until I see what games come out, possible price drops, see so they work out the bugs, any kinks, because there has been reports of yeah, like, like some connection drops with the uh, left Joy-Con controller. Um, but we'll see what happens with that. We'll, we'll wait for the porn. I feel like um, I feel uh, with the thing that Mark said earlier. Yeah, I feel like the reason why they are trying to make it gimmicky and make it more mobile is because everybody's on their phones and stuff like that, you know. Uh, not a lot of people have time to sit down and play actual games, so they try to make it towards like, oh, you could take this anywhere. I don't know, man. <laughs> I know a lot of people used to have time to play video games, but then they have a job, and they're used to playing game... Uh, 
game apps on their iPhones uh, and see, stuff I like that. I kind of going to disagree with that because like RPGs wouldn't have done so well, like uh, Skyrim, Fallout, you know, stuff where you games where you just you know it's kind of encouraged to binge game a little bit. Um, so I, yeah. know from the I sacrificed times during the day when I uh, when I didn't have such a steady schedule, but. Um, well, it's a gamer sacrifice their time and right. stuff like that. I don't just stay up late when they had to wake up early, and, <laughs> and that's why you see a whole bunch of people on Skyrim level the fuck up. Hell yeah. And just uh, getting everything done and getting Assassin's Creed beaten like in several days because of sacrifice sleep and stuff like that. Those games are more worth your time, I guess. Here's the thing. And I guess that's what they're trying to do with the new mobile consoles or whatever. So they're trying to push that agenda by going like, yeah, you could take this anywhere you'll have time for it. Whenever you have time for it, you get to take it on the go. Don't worry if you're on work, use it on your lunch break, stuff like that. They just want to make you have, make it seem like it's the most important thing out there at the moment. Here's the thing. Like you take the joy cons off the controllers, you take the controllers off the switch and it's basically like a small tablet. So I'm thinking they're going to have a lot of like mobile games on this thing, and maybe people might even carry it around uh, with like the Joy Cons in their backpack and the Switch maybe in their pocket, and you know play just quick pick up and play games. But the mobile market for like cell phone gaming has eaten up the market because who all these little kids get their hand-me-down phones and they download Bejeweled and Candy Crush and Farmville and play these crappy games and, mm. and drain their parents' wallets so they can buy digital currency. Oh, it's sick. It's the same reason the Vita failed. <laughs> I hate mobile games, but Nintendo has recently been getting to the mobile market. We all know about Pokemon Go, Super Mario Run, the new Fire Emblem game came out. So the thing with the yeah. Switch is Nintendo has actually been marketing this towards adults more. There was no children, no kids in their reveal trailer. It was all like hip and hip, like trendy adults. So it was like kind of focusing on like nostalgia kind of shit not really nostalgia it was kind of like focusing on the social aspect and that you can bring it anywhere like you can oh uh, okay each controller has a separate control and set it up and play on the screen anywhere you go so it's like a multiplayer game yeah um or you can carry it around or you can dock it at home and um play on the television with a real controller or this like grip that you can put the other controls in but overall, I'm I'm really hyped for this. I'm gonna be watching like hours and hours of of Switch videos until I get one eventually. But I have I just bought a PS Vita a while back, so I'm I've been playing Borderlands too, and I'm probably gonna be playing that for another. Um, Hell yeah, man! A couple of hours. I know so, that just came out of free and gold. I really want to play that again, actually. But uh, yeah. alas, I have no friends to play co-op with, so it's not a not a good time for me. Well, that that's going to wrap it up, actually, because yeah. we're at 40, 43 minutes, and uh, I did have a couple more stories, but we'll save them for next time, or, or I'll delete them. But uh, one more time, I do want to uh, thank 7RC3 Productions for doing the, the artwork. Can't stress that enough. Please show him some love. Go check out his Tumblr, at 7RC3 Productions. Same address on Twitter. The links will be in the bio. And if you want to hear us on iTunes and you'd like us to continue... Uh, recording uh, using that Amazon link will help us pay for the Zencaster website so we can store our uh, podcasts in the cloud as well as hopefully eventually getting us onto iTunes by uh, supporting the um, the storage rates over on the uh, SoundCloud. You know about the SoundCloud. But uh, if not, thank you for listening. Leave a 777 down below in the comments and your uh, favorite Switch launch game. <laughs> hey. But uh, I'm Dan from Mandoreen. You can find me at Mandoreen. Where can we find you guys at? Uh, Funky Mark. You can probably find me on Twitter. I don't really tweet that much. Uh, but, you know, you never know. You might find a goof or, I don't know. Don't really have much to say. I've got this big turtle head happening right now. So, really got to oh. take a shit real soon. Oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That's that. Nice. What turtle head? Oh, you know, you know what turtle heading is? No, it's I when you got a, a piece of shit, or you know, it's kind of sticking out like a turtle's head. 
<laughs> like, yeah. Oh my fucking god. Well, like, it feels like it is, you know? I feel like there's something there, but... Urban Dictionary. Just look yeah. at it. I am done with the okay, world. Okay, Leon, where can we find you? Where can the girls get you? Okay, you can either find me... <laughs> well, um, you can just find me on Twitter, Leon Encore. And I'm mostly active on Instagram, though, so you can hit me up there, too. It's it L-E-O-N underscore E-N. Yeah, go down in the DMs, slide through my DMs. But if you're a guy, block. If you're a transvestite, block. <laughs> okay. Okay. Done. Right. Thanks, thanks for listening to Midnight Snacks, and uh, we'll see you guys again next time. You got any topics, any cool stories, leave them down below. Thanks. Brushing your teeth there? You can brush all on her own. She's getting real back in there in the molars. <laughs>